Good morning. Welcome to the 101 Bible class here at Central Baptist Church. We welcome you by way of TV. We welcome you to come and join us in the classroom any Sunday morning. We meet at 10 o'clock year-round. I'm Jim DeLay, one of the teachers here at 101. Brother Walter Smith is the other teacher, and uh, we are blessed to be able to bring you lessons every Sunday morning. The strength to stand against temptation. How we need so much of that. How we need it so much. But God equips us to stand our ground against all kinds of temptations if we'll just depend on Him. We're always in a spiritual battle because we've got one enemy and He's always there. He never leaves us. He never goes away. Satan does what he can to defeat us and make us turn against our devotion to Christ. So we just have to stand against all the temptations he brings against us. We're not alone in facing temptation. Don't ever forget that. As Christians, we're never alone against temptation. The Holy Spirit is with us. Christ is standing behind us. And God is always there. So we have every kind of strength to stand up against temptations if we'll just use it. We're looking at Ephesians today. Paul didn't uh, talk about errors or attacks on the church and when he wrote Ephesians. He talked about Christian doctrine and the behavior. Behavior. Think about that word for just a moment. Billy and I were talking just a moment ago about behavior in the churches. Sometimes it's not the greatest. But Paul's writing to the church there, and he's talking about the plan that God has for his church and for his people. Now, usually... The book of Ephesians is uh, divided into two sections, the first three chapters being about doctrine and the last three about behavior. But uh, we're looking at the verses 10 through 18, and, and that could actually be a separate section from the other two because it talks about spiritual warfare, and that's what we're looking at this morning in verses 10 through 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. Paul wrote, Finally be strengthened by the Lord and by His vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist the devil in the evil day and having prepared everything Take your stand. Take your stand. That may be something that's very important to us to remember what he's telling the church there and what he's telling us today. Take your stand. Don't ever give up. Don't back down because we've got all kind of help. We can't uh, fight Satan on our own. We can try, but we'll never win against Satan with our own strength. We have to rely on somebody else, on something else. We have to be <clears throat> allow ourselves <coughs> Excuse me. Paul said, be strengthened. That means you've got to allow somebody else to help you. You've got to allow help to come from, from outside. There is something we can do, even though we can't fight Satan on our own. We can acknowledge that we're weak. We can look to ourselves and we can invite God's power to come in and help us to live in us, to give us the kind of strength we need to, to go against the devil. Now, Christ secured our victory on, on the cross. We know that. We're going to win. But we have all sorts of things to fight against between now and then. Paul said we're getting our strength from his strength. He said by his vast strength. That means he has it all. He has all the strength that anybody will ever need. All we have to do is rely on him and, and let him do it. Put on the full armor of God, Paul said. Put on the full armor of God. Now, this is provided by God. It's modeled by God so that we can look and see what it's supposed to be like, how it's supposed to look. It's a complete wardrobe. He didn't leave anything out when he said put on the full armor, the full armor of God. Now, Paul used this because he was familiar with the Roman soldiers' armor and what all they had to put on and how they had to get ready to fight. Now, he was uh, riding in a prison, and chances are pretty good that he was looking at a Roman soldier when he wrote this and all the armor that that soldier had on and what he had to do to get ready to fight. So he was probably getting inspiration <clears throat> from a Roman soldier when he wrote that we can stand against it. We can stand against the temptation if we'll 
armor ourselves with everything that God has to offer. We're always under attack. Satan never rests. He never sleeps. He never goes away. He never goes away. If we've got the armor of God, then we can ward off his attacks. We can stand up against him. We can defeat him. We can stand firm in our commitment to the Lord, and that's what it takes. That's what we need to do. We are to stand, Paul said, against the schemes of the devil. Schemes. That word for schemes is only used twice in the New Testament. Here and over in chapter 4, verse 14, he talks about the schemes of the devil. Deceptive strategies. I guess that's the way you would describe schemes. Something that's going against whoever it is. Satan's full of trickery. He's dishonest. He wants to make us followers of him. He wants to make us over into a picture of him. But we don't need to allow that. We have a struggle in our lives, and it's described like a wrestling match. Not with humans, but with supernatural ones. It's not an ordinary battle. Paul painted it as if two people were locked in combat, two wrestlers, each one trying to take the other one down, and we're fighting against the devil like that, hand to hand. Hand to hand, he's right there. He's trying to take us down. He's using us all the time. He's using susceptible people, people who will follow him and turn against God. He's using them as in a chess game. He's using them as his pawns. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. He's moving them around. He's putting them where he wants them to be. And they're allowing it. We don't need to allow him to move us around anywhere. To take us to any place he wants us to go. We need to stand against him. Opposed to the things of the devil. Opposed to the things of the devil. He is our opposition. He's our enemy. He's the one we're standing up against. He's the one we're fighting all the time. We're not opposed to the things of the devil, but Satan is. He's opposed to anything that has to do with God. He has authority here on earth, but he does not have authority as far as God's concerned. He has no authority over the heavens that God's in. He has just authority here on earth. We have forces against us that are coming from all sides. Satan's the behind that. He's leading it. He's pushing it. We are to take up the full armor of God to stand against Him. That's the only way we can do it. That's the only way we can resist the devil, Paul said, in the evil day. And if we're not seeing evil days now, I don't know what they are. This is so much different from Paul's day. So many more temptations today. So many more things the devil's using as weapons against us. Paul probably could not even imagine some of the things that we're facing today as temptations as Christians. Be prepared, Paul said. Be prepared for everything. No matter what it is, we, we stand up against it. And most of the things that come against us today are unexpected. They just show up. They just pop up in our lives. And we have to be ready, Paul said. Be prepared. If you've got on all your armor, then you can stand against whatever the devil brings against you. Paul wrote, Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Stand, he said. Stand. Stand against the devil. Stand against what he brings against you. <clears throat> Sorry. Put on truth like a belt, he said. Now, the belt was one of the very important things that the Roman soldier had to have as part of his uniform. It was an, an important thing. When he tightened his belt, that meant he was ready for battle. And if it was hanging loose a little bit, that means he was off duty. So the belt was very important, and it held things too. It held his sword, and the sword had to be ready. It had to be ready at any time. When the belt was tightened, the sword had to be ready. Paul kind of put that like... Uh, the belt of truth, he said. Tighten up your belt of truth. Be ready for battle all the time with the devil because he's always there. And then he talked about righteousness, like armor on your chest, the soldier's breastplate, 
covered him from his neck down to his thighs. And it was uh, mostly made of bronze. And it was strong that it could protect the front of the soldier when he was in battle. Now, the officers uh, would have had a coat of chain mail on them because they were uh, more elite and more higher up than the others. They had something a little more expensive to cover their front. So that was to protect against the, the short sword, which was the favorite weapon, uh, to be thrust against the enemy. And this would protect the front of the, the uh, soldier against the thrust of the sword from the enemies. Righteousness, he said. For us, it's righteousness. And that's the, talking about a, being uh, upright or having integrity, being the thing that God expects out of us as followers of Him. Now, it's not something we can do ourselves. We can't become righteous on our own. It's something we receive as a gift from God. Then he talked about the footwear. He said, be, your feet be sandaled with readiness readiness. Now, the Roman soldier had a what was called a war boot that they wore. It was a half boot, an open-toed boot made of leather, had a nail-studded sole on it, and it was attached to the ankles and the shins with leather straps. It was not for running, but it was for marching, marching into battle, standing in, in battle. It would grip the ground much like cleats on an athlete's shoe today so that he could stand firm and not lose his footing while he was fighting hand-to-hand -hand with an enemy. Sure footing, an advantage over the opponents who didn't have such things to help them stand. So it was an advantage for the Roman soldier to have this sandal, be sandaled for readiness, have his boot on ready to go. Now this would tell us that we're to have our feet firmly planted, firmly planted in God's help, and it's part of our armor that we're putting on from God. And then again, he talked about another thing. He said, put on the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. This kind of peace that we have is because of the good news that we have as a believer. That we have the good news coming from two forms. First, we have peace with God. Peace with God. That comes from knowing Jesus. That gives us that kind of peace. We can't have that peace apart from a relationship with Christ. And then the second kind of peace he talks about is the peace of God. The peace of God. We can remain calm in all kind of difficult circumstances because we have that peace. We have the peace of God in our lives. And then after he talked about the belt and the breastplate and the sandals, he talked about the shield, the shield to be used in every situation. Take up the shield of faith, he said, to cover any vulnerabilities that we have from the enemy we're facing. Of course, the enemy is Satan. Roman soldiers had two different kinds of shields they carried. Uh, one was a small round shield that was worn on the forearm during battle just to help ward off attacks. But the one Paul talked about here was the the Roman scutum, he called it. That, that's a word for door because it actually looked like a door. It was big. It was big. It was like uh, four feet high, two and a half feet wide, and it was made out of wood, two pieces of wood glued together and covered with linen and then with hide, and it was bound top and bottom with iron. Can you imagine how heavy that thing must have been? How could a soldier fight and be holding a 50-pound shield in front of him? But that's, that was to protect him. He could get behind that, and the enemy couldn't hit him. The, aim, the arrows that would be shot at him would hit the shield and not have any effect on the soldier. So it was something that would form what we would call a wall of protection. And if two of them stood side by side, they could fight off just about anybody who came at them. Paul was likening that shield to faith. If we have faith, it will protect us. It will stand in front of us against whatever enemies come our way. If the enemy shot flaming arrows at this Roman soldier, they would hit that uh, shield and just fizzle out. They wouldn't, wouldn't hurt who's behind it. Satan's firing flaming arrows at us continually. If we have that shield of faith in front of us, then they'll just fizzle out. They won't have any effect on us. They won't hurt us. 
So that's what Paul is talking about. That will be able to extinguish any flaming arrows that Satan fires at us as he fights us day after day. Now, these flaming arrows that we can face in our lives take a lot of forms. It can be temptation, it can be lust, deception, or a whole number of other things that we have coming at us every day from the devil. Well, if we have that shield of faith, then those arrows will just fizzle out. They won't, they won't hurt us. They won't have any effect on us. Paul said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Take the helmet of salvation. Take means to receive. You have to take it from somebody else. You can't get it on your own. You don't pick it up and put it on. You have to have somebody give it to you. That's the way the Roman soldiers were. They didn't pick up the helmet and put it on. And the armor bearer had to give them their sword and they had to give them the helmet in order for them to put it on. And the helmets usually made out of bronze and they had uh, leather attachments on them. But some of them are made entirely out of leather. I guess it would depend on what your rank was as a soldier, whether you got the good stuff or not. But uh, this was placed on the, on the head, had a band to protect the, the forehead, and it had a plate coming down the back to protect the neck. And it had to be, uh, the shield had to be put on first because the, uh, the handle of the shield wouldn't go over the helmet. So the shield was put on first, then the helmet was the last thing that was put on when the armor was placed on the soldier. We have the helmet of salvation. That's put on our head when we believe and when we follow and when we accept Christ. Then we have the helmet of salvation. That's another protection we have against the devil. Another protection. And we need all the protection we can get. But no matter what happens, we have security in our salvation. We have the helmet on that's going to protect us against a lot of the things the devil tries to throw at us. And that gives us victory. We can experience victory forever as long as we're wearing the full armor of God, including the helmet of salvation. And then he talked about the sword of the Spirit. No soldier would be complete. No Roman soldier would be complete if he had everything else on and had no sword. He wouldn't be able to fight. He could protect himself against the enemy, but he couldn't fight. He would be completely defensive, no offensive at all. He wouldn't be able to do anything without his sword. It's the most wep excellent weapon that we can have is the sword of the Spirit. That gives us power. That gives us strength. That gives us what we need to defeat Satan. Remember, Jesus was tempted by Satan. And what did he use as a defense? The Word of God. He used the sword. The sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. We can use the same thing that he did. We can use those weapons against Satan every day, all the time. And then Paul finished up what he was writing here by telling believers to pray at all times. Pray at all times. We should be in a constant state of prayer. Now that does not mean that we walk around praying out loud every day, all day long. But we are to be in a state of prayer. We're to be in a, in a position to talk to God anytime we need to because He's always listening. Paul said, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the power of the Spirit because we have the Spirit living within us. We have the power that God has given us through our belief in Jesus Christ and that's, that's the sword that we have and prayer is the next weapon. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. That's what we're to always remember that we're praying in the, in the Spirit which heightens and strengthens our intimate relationship that we have with God through Christ. Don't ever stop praying. That means if we're praying constantly, that means the Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit living within each one of us showing us how to pray. Showing us... Uh, who we ought to pray for, what we ought to pray for. So we just need to listen to the Spirit guiding us every day. And that always gives us strength. When we pray in the Spirit, when we pray to God in the right way, we have the power 
and the strength that we need. We can't get along without it. We can't go without the strength that God gives us. And we get it through constant prayer, through staying in touch with Him, through the Spirit that that lives within us. Stay alert, Paul said. Stay alert. Maybe that's one of the things that we need to remember most. After we put on all this armor of God, if we're not alert, then the enemy can still sneak up on us. Satan's still there. And he's still fighting against us. He, He never lets up. He never lets up. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't rest. He just keeps going. And that's what we need to remember. He never goes away. We'll have that enemy fighting against us as long as we live. But if we have the strength that God gives us through the Spirit and through the armor of God that we're putting on every day, we can go against Him. We stand up against His attacks. And the arrows that He throws at us won't hurt us if we have the kind of shield and the kind of vigil that Paul tells us to do. Stay alert. Don't ever sleep. Don't ever believe that the devil is not persistent because he is he is he encouraged all believers to he said pray with perseverance and intercession for all the saints intercessory prayer we need to pray for each other pray for all the saints pray for everybody there are a lot of things to pray for a lot of worthwhile things a lot of people to pray for but praying for other believers is very important. We need to strengthen each other. We need to encourage each other to keep that armor on. Don't ever let down. Don't ever think that the devil is going to let up on you because he's not. He's there constantly. He's right here. Jesus is in this room with us, but so is the devil. He never leaves. He's always around pushing us to go in the wrong direction. We need to Pray that we can resist Him. Pray that other believers will be able to put on the armor and keep it on. Give them the strength that they need to stand up against the devil. We have brothers and sisters in Christ who who get weary. They get tired of the whole thing and sometimes they just want to give up. I'm sure some of us may have had that feeling at some time in our lives when things were just going so against us in such a different way that we got to the point where What's the use? What's the use? Just forget it. Just go on and let it go. We need to pray for each other that when that happens, that the Holy Spirit will bring the strength back to that person and give them what they need to keep going, to keep on the armor of God, keep on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, all the things that Paul talked to us about putting on so that we could stand up against the devil. We have to pray for people who are tired and who are weary, who are ready to give up. Standing against temptation is something we can only be successful at if we approach it in the right direction. We have to look at it in the right way. We have to realize what it is and recognize where it's coming from. All kind of temptation comes our way. We just have to be able to stand against it, to resist it, to turn it away. And what do we need to do that? We need God's Word and we need prayer to stand up against the onslaught of, from Satan that he's throwing at us every day. He's throwing at us every day. The battle, the battle is fierce. It's bad. It's strong. But we, we are equipped with everything we need to stand up against all the things that Satan can throw at us. The armor of God. Putting on the armor of God is something that we all need to do. Once the battle starts, though, it's too late. It's too late. You can't fight without the armor on. You have to put it on first and then jump in the battle. Get in there with Satan and fight him with everything you've got. Resist him with everything you've got. And we have everything we need to stand against the devil if we'll just use it. And remember that God's there. God's there. He sends us the Spirit living in each one of us to help us put on all this armor, to stand up against whatever the devil throws at us. We have to commit ourselves every day to stand up against the battle and keep the Lord with us, keep Him on our side. And then sometimes we need to make just make a list of some of the temptations that we're facing against the devil. 
just write down some of the things you know that the devil is trying to get you to do or not do in any case. Making a list of things sometimes helps to realize just what you're facing, just what you're up against. We can think about a lot of things that the devil tempts us with, but if we start to write it down and look at that list and read over it again, we might realize that the devil's fighting us a little harder than we thought he was. We may have more temptations than we thought we had. So think about doing that. And then maybe think about passages of Scripture that would help with each one of those things that you wrote down. What could you go back and read in the Bible that would help you resist one of the temptations or some of the temptations you have on your list? And then memorize those verses. Put them in your memory so that you don't forget them. So that every time one of those temptations pops up, you know how to fight it. You can think about what God's Word said about how to stand up against a particular temptation, a particular thing that the devil's throwing at you. And most of all, we need to stand together with other Christians, with other Christians. Roman soldiers used to stand back to back in battle so they could fight in two, diff two different directions. Well, that's what we need to do. We're standing back to back with each other so that we can fight with the combined strength of other Christians. We're not trying to fight on our own. We're in a group in the battle together as a, as a bunch of believers, as a congregation, as other believers stand up with us, and we can fight harder. We can fight more if somebody else is fighting with us than we could if we were just standing alone. We can encourage each other. We can stand together with uh, support for each of us who are fighting battles. When something's coming in your life that's got you down, talking with somebody else, another Christian about it will help. Encouragement. We need to always build each other up and give each other strength that maybe we couldn't have on our own. Put on the full armor of God. Let God protect you in all ways against the devil. Because if you've got everything on that God wants you to have on, you can stand up. You can fight the devil. His arrows will bounce off and they won't hurt you. But it's a constant battle. We never give up. We never stop. We never let up because he won't either. Lord, we thank you so much that you're with us, that you give us the strength we need to stand against the devil and all the things that he comes up with to throw at us. Help us to put on that armor of God every day. Help us to use it in every way we can to help us to resist the devil and stand against all the temptations that come our way in life. We thank you for everyone who's attending church anywhere today. We thank you for Central Baptist Church. We thank you for all the people who are here this morning. And may we have a message and may we have a get-together that will help us. They will encourage us to be stronger Christians and leave this place in better shape than we were when we got here. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Walter, can you sing for us? I enjoyed that message. Well, Ethel Page isn't here, is she? I saw her this last week, and they sent her home. So maybe she'll be back next week, I trust. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, no. 
Roll back the curtain of memory now and then.